Where are most of these interiors? So the interiors that I focused on in the show are all based up in far north Queensland. So they're around the sort of Port Douglas, Cape Tribulation area, which is an area I know well for many, many years. And um, the houses are the artists' houses, which are houses uh, particularly eclectically decorated. Um, they have wallpapers and souvenirs and uh, artworks made, in fact, by the owners themselves. So they're quite spectacular interiors. Um, and the other interior is of Kulki Beach House, which is a very remote little um, small house, which is snuggled into the rainforest right up in the Daintree. So it's, it's, it's quite remote, quite beautiful, and right in the heart of this spectacular landscape. What are these works painted on? Uh, all of these works are painted on unfolded, recycled packaging. So essentially, the uh, domestic packaging from the things that we used whilst we were there. So things that we ate, things that we drank, um, in some cases, COVID tests, Panadol, things like that. They're all the things that we used whilst we were there, taken out of their packets, the packets unfolded, and then used to paint on. How important was the actual recycling nature of the way in which you approach these works? The, uh, the recycling of the works or of the substrates was actually uh, important to me um, as a way of expressing uh, or exploring our consumer culture. You know, we have a, uh, we're very ready to throw things out these days. So it's, it was important to me to actually try and recycle these substrates to bring this into being part of the work. Um, the packets as well did have an autobiographical nature to them, as in they reflected uh, essentially the things that were going on around me at the time. And in some of the later works as well, I've actually collaged um, pages from various books that I was reading at the time, which actually is sort of about the mental landscape, the mental landscape that I had whilst I was making these paintings. Um, and also was a sort of a, a slight homage to the fact that all paintings are made up of all sorts of origins and inspirations. Um, and so it was a slight nod towards uh, the books that I was reading, in fact, being part of the inspiration for the works as well. How did you first start using this kind of material? So I first started experimenting with this um, when I was out on an artist residency in the Larapinta, on the Larapinta Trail, which is in Central Australia. It's quite a remote part of the world uh, and there's no rubbish bins, so you have to take all of the rubbish that you create out again. Um, and I had a number of drug packets with me um, owing to uh, an accident where I'd broken my back, so I continually carried drugs around with me to deal with that, particularly in this quite harsh landscape. Um, so I had lots of unfolded packaging uh, that I was putting back into my luggage and I thought, well, I should really be trying to use these instead of just carrying them around. So that's actually where it started. And over the years, you know, over the last decade, I've come back to it from time to time and more and more so painted interiors on these little substrates. So how does the nature of the substrate affect the way in which you paint these predominantly interiors, but sometimes landscapes? I wandered out into the outside world. Most of the show was about interiors, but I actually, um, I found the outside landscape, the Daintree Rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef, such compelling landscapes that I started to make paintings of those as well. So they're part of the show as well. Um, but really it's all about trying to get the right unfolded packaging for the right view or panorama, if you like. So when I look around, um, particularly in the, the interiors, there are particular things that I want to include in the painting, things like the amazing fans that you find everywhere, you know, the ceiling fans up in far north Queensland, um, or in the artist's houses, there'd be a particularly beautiful rug or something on the floor. So I'd realise that I needed to have a little flap in the packaging that went upwards to include the ceiling fan, but also a different flap that would need to come down to include uh, the rug on the floor or something like that. So I'd decide what I was going to draw or paint, and then I'd try and find the right unfolded packaging to allow me to include what I wanted to include into it. So it was surprisingly quite a complex um, process, quite a conundrum of fitting an interior onto a highly irregular surface. As you're trying to 
solve that conundrum, that practical problem of making the work on the recycled packaging, how do you approach that physically as you are beginning to render that environment? Uh, well, the paintings, the paintings, drawings, whichever you like to call them, are uh, um, they begin the process in situ. So they're actually made in the artist's houses or in Crookie Beach House or actually sitting outside in the landscape. So I start with a Sharpie pen and that's how I get the drawing down. Um, and you might think that maybe starting with something that's indelible in such a, a sort of difficult way of fitting things onto a substrate, uh, the Sharpie pen might not be the obvious choice. You might think maybe a pencil would be better. But actually for me, there's something about jumping into the painting and or the drawing in this case and making it a decision that is permanent and then going with that and not being concerned with erasing or correcting. So, so you'll see in the pictures that they can be a little bit wriggly and perhaps not exactly architectural drawings, but I think this is what partly adds to the charm. It's more like the experience of actually wandering through a house um, and observing things. Um, so yes, that's, it's a Sharpie pen. And then I come back into the studio and I use gouache paint to add color.